Okay guys, welcome back. Um, I'm gonna start wiring the cabinet up here in a little bit. Um, I got the power brick down here on the bar. Um, so what I did was I soldered this wire together that we needed to do and this red one, I tied that one together and I had just enough room to solder wires onto these wires coming out of here. And I shrink tubed them all. And then I put ends on them and shrink tubed all those as well. So now we need to put them through this hole in the middle here, this grommet. Easier said than done. And hopefully this is right. I believe it is. I'm having a hard time finding any inf information on it. But here's our capacitor right here. We're going to put the blacks on one side and the reds on the other. And if for some reason this is wrong and somebody sees this video, please let me know. Because I'm not 100% positive. I'm pretty confident, but... Never know. Okay, so that should wrap everything up underneath here. Everything's hooked up, should be where it goes. I still have to put fuses in the fuse holders, but I need to see what value fuses go in each one. I have to look that up. Okay, I cut a new piece of paper, poster board, and that'll lay in there. I did not have two more of those screws that matched the original ones, so I have four new ones. They're just, uh, they look like this. Almost the same, a little bit different. They're actually a hair bigger in size. So that completes this. This is ready to go in the bottom of the cabinet. Actually, I'm gonna look up the fuses and we'll put those in now. Just so I don't have to do it afterwards. These ones should still have fuses in them. Yes, they do. Okay, I opened this power brick back up. I wired this wrong. I ended up pulling the journey apart because it just didn't seem right to me. And thank God I did because it wasn't right. So these two blacks got to come off of here. One red from here goes on one side. The other red goes on the other side. So one red here, one red here. Then we have two wires left over. The one to the right here, this one is my brown and white wire that goes over to the brown and white terminal over here which i'm going to have to make room for it because we are missing a terminal and that's probably why this isn't connected part of the reason somebody probably broke a terminal off of there so i'm going to have to splice two wires together here for instance these two together and then plug them into the brown and white and then this one right here this one is blue and white, which goes to the blue and white terminal, which there is one available right here. So technically, earlier in the last video, I did have that in the right direction. It was just missing a terminal. So I just got to get this on there. loose I'm gonna have to uh, crimp it tighter together 
So yeah, I, did, I didn't want to pull the journey apart, but I ripped it all apart and pulled that power brick out just to double check. And I'm glad I did because I would totally have been wrong. I don't know if it would have done anything. It might have. I'm not sure. So now I'm going to have to take these two and splice them into one and then hook it into there. So I'll do that now and then I'll be back. Okay, now we are right. Our two red wires come off of here, go through here one to each side and I know for a fact because I pulled this off and re-looked this one right here right here was in fact brown and white it was just so dirty it looked almost black to me so this one was brown and white which I brought over and I had to splice it into this one I just use a crimp connector with a heat shrink tube attached to it and that's our brown and white there and then the last one which is blue and white which goes to this terminal right here, blue and white. So now I know that this is correct. Okay, now I gotta figure out the value of these fuses because on my journey, it says the orange wires, I have a three amp in the orange and both reds. And then there's a seven amp in one of the blacks and a five amp in the other black. So I'm not sure that those are correct. Obviously the game is working but that doesn't mean that these are the correct values. Um, I have the, I have a MCR system game manual and a tapper one, but neither of these are showing what value fuses I need. So I'm gonna have to go online and see if I can't find what value fuses and what position they go in. Um, and also I could probably look back at my photos of the power brick and see if maybe I can see in my picture of that label that was pretty beat up see if maybe I can see which ones are on that okay I found on my video and what I could see in the video was 3 amp 3 amp 3 amp 5 amp 5 amp so I think what happened with on the journey this 5 amp probably blew at one point so somebody used a 7 amp in that in its place now I know like on uh, spy hunter I believe these ones are like 4 amps these first three, but I'm gonna go with the three because from what I can see on my video of the power brick, that's uh, what was in there. Now these are all slow blow fuses. So you wanna make sure you get those um, rather than a regular fuse. I think they're called slow blow, fast acting, I don't know. I can't remember everything. Seems the older I get, the less I remember. So these are three amps here, so I need three of these. Set this back up on a tripod. Okay, yes, these are slow blow fuses. So these first three are three amp fuses, and these go on the orange and the two red. And then the last two are five amp. And if for some reason the one five amp blows, I'll put a higher amperage in there, but I'm pretty positive it's supposed to be five. So those are all set. Um, I did, when I cleaned everything yesterday on this, I did sand all these terminals down on the inside so we have a nice connection to all those. If you want, you could take your multimeter and put your lead on each side, and if it beeps, you know you have continuity, you have a good connection. But we should be good there. So now I'm going to get set up so that we can start... Um, putting this and the circuit board and the power supply and stuff in the cabinet and then we can start routing the wires. Okay, I'm gonna get the power brick mounted in the bottom of the cabinet here. And then we'll mount the circuit board and the old power supply and stuff. I probably won't start wiring it until the next video because I kind of forgot that I needed to mount all this stuff first. Now, remember, on this cabinet, we put a new bottom on it. So I got to just kind of center this up and make new screw holes. That yeah, looks pretty good there.
if you guys remember when we uh, made this for the, we made one of these for the journey. I also made one for Tapper at the same time. This bracket that holds the uh, PCB onto the uh, cabinet. So we need to get this in here next. I believe it goes this direction. can see the old holes from the old bracket. So they kind of had it shifted this way a little bit. It looks like, I'm just gonna center it. It'll be fine. I'm gonna put one screw into the piece of wood first. Okay, I'm gonna mount an old power supply to the side where it's supposed to go. Um, I'm using a switching power supply, so I'm not gonna use this. But I don't have all the right brackets to mount it to the wall. I do have this long one here, so we'll put that on the bottom. And then it goes down here. And then I have two small pieces that we can use on each side. And that'll hold the power supply in place. Trying to reuse some existing holes if I can, but somebody has mounted other boards and stuff in here over the years. It's just nice to keep this original one in there just so it's there.
do have one more of these small ones. I'm going to go grab it and I'll put it right here. Then it won't slide up. If, if I are ever to get rid of the cabinet and you were laying on its back and transport it, at least you don't have to worry about it sliding up and causing damage to possibly the monitor or something else if it was bouncing around in the cabinet. So I'm gonna go grab one more of those little ones. Okay, I grabbed one more of these. We'll just put it on the center up here. the wiring harness I have to get those uh, vinyl uh, loops and everything which I have them to um, mount the harness to the walls and stuff I don't have any of that because um, this cabinet was completely empty when I got it uh, now what I want to do is um, do the power supply the switching one and what I'm gonna do is solder wires onto this and then mount them onto here. This, this comes designed to go right on here. Just like this. Loosen the screws. You put all five of those, loosen them. You slide this in there, you tighten it down. Does not make a good connection. Um, I don't like using them. So what I did on the journey was, is I took this power supply and I mounted it right back here on the back wall. And then I took my wires from there and I ran them over to this. And I mounted this somewhere in this area. I think it was right around this area. On a couple legs. So that's what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut five wires that go from here to there and then solder them onto here. Um, I have all the colors I should need here. I have red and black, um, yellow and blue. So I'll do like a traditional JAMA harness where 12 volts is yellow, negative five is blue, plus five is red, and then the two grounds are black. Um, I just like to try to keep it like that because I'm just used to wiring like that from doing a lot of JAMA cabinets in the past. So I'm going to go ahead and get five wires soldered onto here. I'm not going to show that part. I'll get them soldered onto here and then um, we'll leave them long and then we'll cut them and put ends on them so that we can mount this over here. I guess we could probably, uh, we'll mount this after we put the wires on it. So let me go do that and I'll be back in a few. Okay, I got them all cut, so now I'm waiting for the soldering iron to heat up. Um, these are all 16 gauge wire. Okay, I got the wire soldered onto the board here. I did a nice big solder. There's plenty holding it on. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to crimp these ends on, these forks, and they have shrink tube on them. And then we just uh, heat it up with the torch real quick. You can use a heat gun, torch, lighter, whatever you want. So I'm going to do that to the other four. And then we're going to zip tie these wires together. And on the, I, I buy these expensive clip, crimpers, they're like 30 or 40 bucks, but they have a little notch in here and then a hole. So when you crimp them, it really crimps them tight. It's a lot better than those cheap sheet metal ones that you can buy. And you can get these at Home Depot Lowe's. And I think actually Harbor Freight actually sells these now. And they're only like 10 bucks. I haven't tried them yet, but it looks like it has the right crimper on it. 
they actually consider these for non-insulated uh, crimp connections, but I think it works really good on them. I know it's hot, but I like to use my fingers and kind of smash it tight to the wire. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all these wires, kind of bunch them together here. I'm going to start zip tying it together. Just using these little four inch zip ties. This just gives you a nice harness. It's nice and neat. It's not all over the place. It can take it out of the cabinet real easily. Okay, cut all the zip ties off. I gotta get some standoffs so I can mount this to the cabinet. But first, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run these wires behind this old power supply. Then out the back here, let that dangle for now and then we can hook all these in. We still have a power wires that we'll have to hook in that have to go to the main power, but we can do that afterwards. Got to grab a Phillips bit for my drill. Sorry, you're not in frame. So what I did was I ran the wires behind this power supply to here. And then I'm going to hook up these wires to the power, the new power supply. And we still have uh, the main line ground and power and neutral that we have to hook up still. But we could do that. We'll do that later. So our blue is our negative 5. Yellow is our plus 12. Red is our plus 5. And then our two blacks are our ground wires. You could put them both on one terminal if you want. I have the room, so I'll put one on each terminal just to keep them separate. Okay, that's done. This is gonna mount in there like that. And then this is going to mount right up here. So I'm going to go grab a couple standoffs and mount that, and I'm going to mount Okay, I got the power supply mounted on the back wall there. 
And now I'm going to mount this up here, just like that. I put the legs on the back of this board. Try to straighten it out the best I can here. Okay, that's mounted in there. And I did bring this one part of the harness here. This plugs into the power brick, and then it just plugs into these uh, two connectors up here, which don't look right. And I don't know why. Oh, you know what? It just gets this one. This one doesn't get used, I believe. And I'll tie that up tomorrow. But I'm gonna end this video here. Uh, we got it started. We got the main components in here and tomorrow we can run the wiring um okay so i'm gonna like i said i'm gonna end it here tomorrow we'll run the wiring um put the marquee light in um i'm missing a couple brackets to mount the monitor into the cabinet hopefully tomorrow i have a lead on some hopefully fingers crossed i can go get some if he has them uh, and I'm also missing the te test switch bracket, which goes behind the coin door. Um, hopefully I'll have that as well. And then um, also the coin door needs to be put together and then, uh, you know, get it adjusted and get it working. Got to put the uh, handles on the back of the cabinet, power on off switch, stuff like that. So that's going to end this video. And tomorrow I uh, will make one putting the wiring and stuff in. So I'll see you guys later. If you like what you're seeing, please like and subscribe. And I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.